Hello, beloved. I want to use this special opportunity to welcome you to this special segment of our program. Today, I just want to share a scripture with us as the Lord has apportioned unto me. We're looking at letting go of your past pains, letting go of your past worries, not allowing the misfortune of yesterday decide our today, living above, beyond our misfortunes. The world we live in is highly unpredictable. Things happen that we least expected. Now, everyone on earth will always go through one situation or the other that we never envisaged. Disappointment from those we love. Disappointment from those we call friends. Sometimes we try to find an answer to why those we love end up hurting us. Why those we trust in end up doing things we couldn't even imagine, we couldn't believe that they could do to us. Sometimes we might be praying for something and praying and praying and it does often come out the way we deserve. And as a result of that, we tend to live with the pains of yesterday. We tend to carry yesterday to today and align the heartbreak, align those frustrations, align those passions and so forth, destroy our today. Let me tell you, the worst thing that we can do is carrying the worries, the past worries of yesterday and allowing them to drop us of our hope for today. Now, the only way we can forge ahead is by forgetting about yesterday, forgetting about what has happened, the misfortunes of yesterday and keep hope alive and forging ahead, keeping our hope, keeping our focus on Christ and Christ. Now, let me tell you something. As soon as you let go of your past worries, fixing your eyes on Jesus Christ, the author and the finisher of your life, then you have freed yourself of the pains. You are free yourself to fall, to spring high to a greater height. Can we quickly look at 1 Samuel chapter 15? Let's look at it from verse 10. The Bible makes us understand here that the Lord told Samuel, Saul has stopped obeying me and I am sorry that I made him king. Samuel was angry and he cried out in prayer to the Lord all night. Hallelujah. Now, this is the same man God made king. At the time, the children of Israel were agitating for a king. They were agitating for a hero. And God said, I have found myself a king. And he said, go and anoint Saul. After Samuel had anointed Saul, Saul disobeyed God. And now God went again to Samuel and told him, Saul, that I ask you, to anoint him as disobey me. And as a result of that, I am disappointed in him. Samuel was so passionate about Saul to the extent that he started crying. And he went to God asking why, pleading that God, if God could only reverse it. In fact, on the very next day, he went straight to Saul to see how he can obtain what God has said. In the midst of the agitation of Samuel, the more he was praying, the more he was fasting, trying to correct what has been done, forgetting that God has already ruled out Saul. But God has a special way of doing his own thing. Now let me tell you something, something that is very important. The thing that happened to you yesterday, you might still be crying over it, but it is already a spill make. But realize this, there is no good in it anymore. It is as nothing as a trash. There is greater height ahead of you, and the only way you can unleash into those heights is for you to forget about yesterday. Now, in verse 16, in verse 1, one day he said, Samuel, I have rejected Saul, and I refuse to let him be king anymore. 
Stop feeling bad about this. Put some olive oil in a small container and go visit a man named Jesse who lives in Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be my king. Hallelujah. Look at how beautiful God is. God has already went ahead. Even when Samuel was crying, even when Samuel was praying, even when Samuel was frustrated because the king that he anointed had been rejected by God. God did not end there. God went a step further and chose himself another king. And God told Samuel, son, enough of your cry. I have rejected this man. I have rejected this man. Hey, anything Anybody that has rejected you in the past, for the fact that they have broke you, for the fact that they said no to you in the past, for the fact that that uncle of you did not meet up to that demand, means that God has something special ahead of you. Now, the Bible makes us understand that his ways are different from ours. His thought pattern is different from ours. And his plan and his purpose for our lives is to give us an expected end, to make us prosper in whatever we are doing. So even in the midst of that, the only way you can go ahead is to forget about the past worries and forge ahead. This is what Samuel did there. When God spoke to him and told him, Saul, forget about the past worry. Forget about Saul. Saul is already a spilled milk. I can't bring him back anymore. But there is somebody I have chosen for myself. I have seen a man that is after my heart. Go, take the oil, put in the jar, and go and anoint one of the sons of Jesse. When you get there, I am going to show you who he is. Now, who did he anoint? He anointed David. Now, looking at the life of David and looking at the life of Saul, you will see a big difference. The Bible makes us understand that David was the man after the heart of God. Not just that David was the man after the heart of God. The Bible also makes us understand that it takes 3,000 men to even stand the presence of David in battle. The Bible also makes us understand that David ruled fearlessly, conquered every nation that came fighting against the children of Israel. He was a warrior. It means that God has something special in stock for us than what is behind us. So, let go of your past worries and launch into the deep, knowing with that certainty that God has a special. When I mean special, I mean something extraordinary. I mean something that will blow your mind. There is a great height ahead. But you will not get this height. You will not get to this height if you are still holding on to those past pains. You will not get this height if you are still crying over that person that left you two years ago. You will not get this height to this height if you are still frustrated because that person, that business deal that was supposed to work did not work. You will not get to that height if you are still crying because that person you thought was a friend is not a friend. Brother, the reason why that relationship did not work, the reason why that business deal did not work, the reason why God did not allow you to succeed in that thing is because he has a greater plan for you. It is because that is not your class. God has something that is your what ahead of you. Rise up and stop crying. For those who are ready to fight to the end, win the crown. Rise up. Forget about yesterday and move ahead. Forge ahead. Because that is the language of victors. Now the Bible did not tell us that hard times will not come. The Bible did not tell us that trying times will not come. But one thing the Bible tells us is that even in the midst of the storm, even in the midst of the crisis, that God is going to be there with us and is going to turn every crisis into our life into celebration. Until that disappointment of yesterday is transformed into something extraordinarily, you have not achieved anything. And the only way you can turn the crisis of yesterday into celebration of today is not carrying the crisis of yesterday into today and living with those crises. Allow the Holy Spirit to erase those things off your mind. I was touched strongly on the way David handled the situation that came around. 
The Bible makes us understand that the enemies came and attacked the family of David and took all his family, took all his inheritance. And by the time David came from the war, he discovered that his family has been taken off has been taken over. The most treasurable thing he had on earth has all been taken by the enemy. What did David do? He went to cause in prayers. He cried. Let me tell you the truth. Crying times, you will definitely cry. Crying times. No, there's nothing bad about crying. But what it becomes bad is when you remain there and refuse to move forward. What did David did? He cried his ass off and he went to God in prayer. He took just a word to God in prayer. Father, should I go? Should I pursue after these people? And the word of God came down to him and said, Son, go ahead, pursue. You will not only overtake them, but you will reclaim all that has been taken over from you. And what did David did? Instead of him sitting down and, and allowing his present realities decide his tomorrow, he said no. He put his faith on God. He put his trust in God and decided to forge ahead. You know what happened? He went ahead. And the word of God has come forth. He said he went ahead. He overcame them and he took back all the enemies had stolen from him. In the same way, the Bible is telling us right now that if you can only forget about the past worries of yesterday and forge ahead, that the past worries, everything that has happened yesterday will turn to it, will become yesterday. And today will be a brighter light, a new hope, a new beginning. Stop crying. Forget about the past worries. And as you do that, with your confidence in God, a greater height will you achieve. Hallelujah. I trust God you have been richly blessed. Now, it is important for you to note that it is only in Christ Jesus that you can have eternal salvation. It is only in Christ Jesus that you can draw strength to forget about your past worries. It is only in Christ Jesus uh, that can heal those broken hearts. It is only in Christ Jesus uh, that can, you can receive a new inspiration to forge ahead. It is important. If you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, it is important you give your life to Him because only in Him can you find solution. Only in Him can you find satisfaction. Only in Him will you find the inspiration you need to forge ahead. I encourage you to accept Him into your life as your Lord and personal Savior. If you want to do that, can you please bow down your heads as we take this very simple prayer together. It is not too long, but it is too powerful. It is not a very strenuous exercise, but it is something that can transform your life around. Can you just make up your mind right now and bow your heads in prayer? As we pray together, dear Lord, I commit that young man, I commit that lady, I commit that woman that has had this word of yours today. I want to give his or her life to you. Father, I decree and I all the trespasses, any way they have gone wrong, forgive them in the name of Jesus. I decree right now that their name be written in the book of life. Thank you, Father, for forgiving them in the name of Jesus. Amen. I strongly believe that this short prayer has changed your life forever because it's too, too powerful to leave you the same way you were. You know what? Find a good Bible-believing church and attend where your faith can be nurtured, where your faith can be groomed to become the true and perfect image of Him. For those of you that is going through one, form of pain, one form of heartbreak or the other and you are afraid. In fact, you have heard the word today and you are asking in your mind right now, how do I forge ahead? Can you please bow your heads in prayer as I invite Jesus into your life to take over that situation and give you a new beginning. I pray dear Father that you heal them right now in the name of Jesus. I decree right now for a new hope for them to forge ahead, for them to achieve new heart. That zeal, that power to forget about yesterday, fixing their eyes on you. I decree right now that you are free 
and your affinity because the Bible makes us understand that whosoever the Son of Man has set free is free indeed. Thank you, Jesus. Congratulations because it is over and it is over. Because this is the confidence that we have in Him that whatever we ask from Him, He does it. I know He has touched you specially. God bless you and keep on keeping on being that perfect person that Christ has made you to be. God bless you.